We have a new speaker line from PMC. This is the Prodigy One, the most affordable speaker available from PMC. See, I'm still the cheap audio man. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's see if these cheap PMC speakers are worth the price of admission. PMC has kind of an interesting history. They are a UK-based company, and according to their website, they started in 1990, which is an awesome year. I was a freshman in high school driving around a 1979 Dodge Aspen RT because I had a farm permit I could drive when I was 14. PMC made studio monitors and speakers for the home, and it looks like a bunch of major music superstars like Prince, Brian May, Stevie Wonder have all used PMC monitors in their recording process. And I think Dolby Atmos utilizes PMC speakers for mastering of music. I don't know. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, put it in the comments. It's never stopped you before. Anyway, they're designed and built in the UK. $1,700 is what this speaker costs. Now that puts this speaker solidly in the upper echelon of what I normally review. I've reviewed a few speakers that are more expensive, a lot of speakers that are a lot less expensive. However, I have recently reviewed the Bucard P300, which come in around the $1,500 range, maybe even $1,600. I've reviewed the Arendal speakers that come in around the same price point. So I think I've got enough reference points to be able to say, hey, is this speaker worth it at $1,700? If you know anything about PMC though, you would say this speaker is a bargain compared to the rest of their line because the rest of their line is, well, a lot more expensive. This speaker, the Prodigy One, also has a bit of a secret. Well, it's not really a secret. They do things a little bit differently than other speaker companies. The Prodigy One and the rest of the Prodigy line uses transmission line stuff in their speakers. Let's ask chat GPT what transmission line means. What is a transmission line speaker? Wow, that was quick. A transmission line speaker is a type of loudspeaker design that uses an acoustic transmission line within the cabinet. This design approach seeks to, wow, this is getting long. This design pro approach seeks to improve the quality of the low frequency sound produced by the speaker. Here's how it works. Unlike traditional speakers that may use a sealed or ported enclosure, transmission line uses a long folded path for the sound waves generated by the back of the speaker driver. The path is usually damped by absorbent material. Okay, so there's foam in there. Transmission line is tuned to a specific frequency, allowing it to reinforce the low frequency sounds, blah, blah, blah. Complex design and construction. That's what's really interesting. So these speakers, a transmission line, if you look at the enclosure design, is a lot more expensive to make. And that's why I think a lot of speaker companies don't use a transmission line because you can get lower base out of the same size. However, the enclosure costs goes through the roof. There's actually a Dayton audio speaker that I think is a transmission line speaker. That's super cheap. Due to their complexity, these speakers can be more expensive and are often found in high-end audio systems. They are appreciated by audiophiles and enthusiasts who seek high quality sound pre-production, especially in the lower frequency ranges. Well, there you go. That's what ChatGPT has to say about transmission line. I should just have ChatGPT do an entire review for me. Let's talk about where I had them. I had the PMC Prodigy Ones in my living room for the entirety of the evaluation process. However, in the middle of the evaluation process, I changed the living room. So I went from being on a small wall to being on the giant wall. And I think by changing where I had the speakers placed, it dramatically impacted how the speakers sounded. Not really how they sounded, I guess, but the largeness of the speaker presentation. When I had them on the smaller wall, they sounded bigger. When I had them on the bigger wall, they sounded less big, but they still sounded amazing. And one has to consider the diminutive, I don't know if I said that right, size of the speaker. They're small. So we have a five and a quarter inch woofer, basically. Wait for it. Oh yeah. And then a uh, one inch tweeter. All right, finally, this is actually working. I just went on a really 
excellent diatribe about the specifications of the speaker. I forgot to hit record. Okay, so we're gonna try to do this again. One inch soft dome tweeter, five and a quarter inch woofer right there. Aggressive grill on the bottom, 12 and a half inches tall. Very nice finish, although it does pick up the fingerprint. So once you get it put somewhere, you might wanna do this. Unless you like the looks of your own fingerprints or face prints, cheek prints. Reported frequency response of 50 all the way up to 25,000 Hertz. Six ohm nominal impedance, 87 and a half DB of sensitivity, which means these aren't terribly hard to drive, not super easy to drive, kind of in the middle to drive, which means a variety of amplification will make sure that you're getting the best out of your Prodigy Ones. However, not all amplification is created equally. I had these hooked up to the XPA Gen 3 from Emotiva, which is a multi-channel amplifier. However, I had it hooked up to mono modules within that amplifier, putting out, well, a lot of power. That was being fed by the RMC1L surround sound processor. However, I was running it through the balanced inputs in reference stereo, the balanced outputs of the DeShelly Labs J2 AKM449 DAC with Sparkos op amp upgrades was being fed by the Weem Pro streamer. All of that being spit out, connected with a wire, it's Prodigy ones. I also tried this out with the Weem amp which is a class d amplifier with the 3255 texas instruments chip which puts out 60 watts into eight ohms i think 120 watts into four ohms both of those pieces of equipment drove them just fine however they did sound quite different so i moved the living room around right so in moving the living room around i took down most of the speakers so i was only running two channels a front channel front left and right later i did add in a center speaker anyway i was running the prodigy ones off of the weem amp and my main home theater setup i like to do that with new speakers because i can tell a lot about a speaker by watching television and movies and hearing how the mid-range how the vocals are presented don't get me wrong i love listening to music but i can almost review an entire speaker by just running these without a center channel watching television soundstage and imaging is very good and if you're looking at this thing you don't see like this huge waveguide that's gonna throw stuff out but man oh man does it throw a nice wide soundstage and tall. I was doing Christmas decoration setup and I was all the way upstairs and the music sounded clean, articulate. And I was in another room about 15 feet above these speakers. Point being is if you can't get these right at ear level as far as the tweeter is concerned, don't worry about it because they're still gonna sound awesome even off access. Really impressed with the off-axis, especially the vertical off-axis. I was in the kitchen too. These sounded awesome. I'm gonna say great on the soundstage and imaging. Let's talk about the bass. Bass, since this is a transmission line speaker, you're gonna get better bass, lower bass, more authoritative bass. Out of a speaker of the same size, which is sealed, of course, or even ported. Did these blow me away thinking these were tower speakers or something? No, but these were so small compared to my room that they almost look like toys. And while watching movies, I still wanted a subwoofer. When I was listening to music, I still kind of wanted a subwoofer. It wasn't immediately apparent that I needed a subwoofer. The Arendals that I had in here recently are a sealed enclosure and you know right away that you need a subwoofer. They do a pretty good job for a sealed enclosure, but they're huge compared to the Prodigy ones. Really cool thing about the bass is how effortless it was even on fairly complicated tracks, fairly busy tracks. I had my son helping me out review these speakers. When I say help me out, he was just down there when I was listening to some music and I asked, I like to ask him what he thinks of stuff. So first of all, I'll say this. He said these are infinitely better than the BMW 606 S3. So that's Tristan's review. Short, succinct, to the point. These are infinitely better than the BMW 606 S3. We listen to Riders of the Storm by The Doors. He really likes classic music like The Doors, Pink Floyd. I don't blame him for that. Anyway, at the beginning, there's do, 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 do. And the amount of cleanliness, 
clarity that came through and the initial, I guess it's a bass line. I don't know if it's a guitar, bass line, was amazing. We were listening to these about 70 dB, so we weren't pushing them super hard. And I think, I'll get into it in the final thoughts, but this speaker I think really is at its best when it's between about 75 and 85 dB. Even lower, but anything outside of 85 dB, it just doesn't seem like the Prodigy ones are super comfortable, and that makes sense because of their size, right? In a smaller room, and I've listened to these in my biggest room because, again, I like to push a speaker. I like to see how far it can go. You can get away with these in a large room if you have a subwoofer. You don't even really have to put a high-pass filter, but if you do put a high-pass filter on them, they're not going to have to struggle reproducing all of the bass. So, in a huge room, you can get away with these 2.1 setup high pass filter. In a small room, like an office, you're probably still gonna wanna sub if you're really crazy about getting all of the music. But as far as bass impact in your chest, you don't need a subwoofer in a smaller room. Probably even a medium sized room, you don't need a subwoofer. Bass was quick, extended, rich, and effortless below about 85 dB. Uh, Mid-range when watching television, we were watching uh, Invincible. It's like an animated thing based on a graphic novel. It's on Amazon Prime. Anyway, he was watching it, so I was listening to it. The one thing that I did notice is some of the, uh, not the vocals, some of the dialogue in the lower mid-range, and I got out my RTI around 350 hertz, seemed a little bit harder to hear. It wasn't like it wasn't clean or clear. It was just, I had to lean in a little bit to hear it. On music though, I never noticed any issues with the mid-range. Everything has a touch of warmth to the mid-range, which I love. Female vocals, especially Adele, was just mm, awesome. Alanis Morissette, awesome. You might not hear the subtle vibratos in the voices, but the fullness, the organic nature, the believability, the tonally ac tonal accuracy, I guess, of these speakers is really spectacular in the mid-range. Male vocals, The Doors, Jim Morrison, sounded amazing. Like zero issues in the mid-range. If you're only using these for everything, so for television too, there may be some moments where you have to lean in a little bit. And again, that was around the 33350 areas. Let's talk about travel. Higher Love, Steve Woodenwood. There's a whole bunch of percussion going on. You can learn a lot about Trouble by listening to the percussion, the intro to that song. Prodigy Ones were spectacular. And that's when I was like, I didn't read any of the specs before I started listening. So I was having a hard time determining what type of tweeter was used here because it was so snappy and quick on the top end that I thought it might be a Metal Dome tweeter. But again, it didn't have any of the issues that sometimes I associate with a Metal Dome tweeter as far as a little bit nasally or anything like that. So I was really surprised when I found out there was a Soft Dome tweeter because it was just so cracky and snappy up top. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm saying that in an excellent way. There is enough air in here. Actually, Dumb by Nirvana was like, you could just hear the recording, the space. So the top end here, I think, is superb borderline if not perfect combines everything that i love about a metal dome tweeter and everything i love about a soft dome tweeter puts them together and then gives you a wonderful top end really really good what are my final thoughts Prodigy ones, man, they're good they're also expensive so i think if you were looking for like the ultimate near field listening experience or smaller room listening experience, these should be on a short list of speakers to consider. This is my type of speaker where I'm not feeling like I'm sacrificing bottom end for the sake of mid-range. I think these are a neutral speaker, but the mid-range isn't pushed so forward like on the Aaron dolls that I just reviewed that it seems uncomfortable. Everything seems really balanced on the bottom end through the mid-range and the top end. Much more top end extension and clarity than the P300s from Bucard. Although I thought those were good. I thought they were better than the S400 Mark IIs. But the Prodigy 1s give you even more extension, more air. 
and everything was just effortless below 85 db and we shouldn't expect a speaker of this size to be really able to push 90 95 db all of the time very transparent to the amplifier I noticed a lack of bass when it was coming out of the Weem amplifier. To be fair, the XPA Gen 3 drops bombs. Mid-range also seemed a little bit more forward coming out of the Weem amp, but not too terribly uncomfortable. For movies and television, it actually seemed a little bit better through the Weem amp than compared to the Emotiva setup. Granted, the Emotiva is a 16-channel home theater setup, and I was only listening to the front two channels. So we shouldn't blame the Emotiva either. I think it's great that PNC has put out an affordable, I get it, this is expensive, but for PMC, this is an affordable line of speakers that's designed and built in the UK. I think it's exciting that we have these legacy companies that have been at price points that are unobtainium, now getting below $2,000. And $2,000 is a lot of money, but if one saves up for a few years, you can aspire to something like the Prodigy Ones. This is a knockout speaker. If you don't have the $1,700, a speaker that reminds me of the Prodigy One is the PSB Imagine XBs little PSB speaker. I think they come in around $400 now. You're not gonna get near the top end clarity. You're not gonna get the mid-range clarity and you're not gonna get the bass clarity, but the overall kind of sonic characteristic is very similar to the PSB Imagine XB. Kind of funny, PSB, PMC. If you're into DIY, the CSS Crichton 1TDX, very similar sonic characteristic, but you're coming in around $1,200 for that speaker and you have to build it yourself. You may just want to get the PMCs. Really amazing speaker. Very, very impressed. If I'm comparing them to the Emotiva B2 Plus, cleaner mid-range, cleaner bass, and a top end that seems a little bit more natural. Don't get me wrong, I love the B2 Plus. I think they're awesome. But if we're talking about tonal accuracy, then I think the Prodigy Ones have it in spades above the Emotivas. And they should, the Emotivas are like 350 bucks. So if you have the budget, highly recommend it. These are a lot of fun. So if you wanna support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio man. You can use the links in the description. Most of those are affiliate links. This will not be an affiliate link. I will link a place out of Atlanta, I believe, that sells and stocks the PMC Prodigy series. You can also buy me a cup of coffee down at the bottom of the video. There's a thanks button. Any support that you can give me would be greatly appreciated, but don't feel compelled to buy me anything. Just watching and subscribing helps me out a ton too. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Maybe bust out the credit card, get yourself a pair of PMC Prodigy Ones, and listen to the sweet, sweet sounds of audio perfection in a small room underneath 85 dB. Fill your soul with happiness. With that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.